Howdies and salutations, y'all. We're uh, about to jump into another stream, and now that Art Fight is done, we've got some different things on the table. First off, um, for anyone wondering, yes, we will get back to Stardew and a few of the other games of that sort. Don't you worry there. Um, now that we're not doing, f uh, working on quite the same deadline for Art Fight, we have a little more flexibility in what we do. Wow, that was... I know it's intentionally off-key, but wow. Sorry. Anyway, um, yes, I think the music might be a tad louder for me than for y'all. If it's too quiet, by all means, let me know. Or don't. You don't have to. You're welcome to sit there with uh, awkwardly quiet music. That is a-okay as well. But to get to what we're going to do today, and this is something a little different, but it's something worth doing, is a lot of times people talk about trying to figure out how you're going to develop your own style. And obviously, evidence points to it just being draw a lot and eventually the way you draw is your style like it just sort of happens but that doesn't mean you have to stick to just that one you can you can tweak it and adjust it same with handwriting by the way if you're really unhappy with like some of your letters and handwriting just try out some different ways to do them practice it a bunch of times and then make like as you write normally try to make a point of drawing them differently you'll mess up a few times but eventually you can totally change your handwriting by doing that Although, don't go too overly flowery, or you'll make your handwriting much slower as well. Um, or it'll just be really fast but unintelligible, which is a mistake I did to myself and had to retrain some things. Um, anyway, that's slightly off topic. One of these days we'll do a calligraphy stream. But not until I figure out how to get an actual camera set up, and that is more than I can deal with right now. In the future, though, we're doing this one step at a time. This is, I guess it's technically month two, but we're not quite on the exact one month anniversary just yet wow that's coming up pretty quick though crazy that we're doing this for several weeks already time flies don't it but yeah so today's activity and hopefully we'll get to do many of these um to my knowledge it's not a copyright issue or anything like that um and i think it is a worthwhile thing so if you're trying to adjust your style and the odds are if you're doing that you've got some artists you follow who you like their style or if you don't, there's plenty you can peruse, whether you go back to the old masters of the, the ancient world, or renaissance, or, I mean, you can also, you know, leave Europe and actually go explore styles across the world. So, like, medieval art in many different places is absolutely amazing. Um, actually, I've got a soft spot for the European stuff, too. But, that's neither here nor there. The point is, you can study those, or you can study more recent ones. Um, and so, what I like to do occasionally is, when I'm trying to figure out... What I want to do in my style is I look to see, like, okay, here's a, here's an artist I really like. How the heck do they do it? What is their style? What are they doing? I'm going to scooch this song forward a tad. There we go. Um, but yes, so, and I've gotten this idea from a few places. I believe the first place I heard it suggested was a Drawing With Waffles. Fun little channel, that one. A little, much bigger than ours. <laughs> but they've, they've got some good stuff. Um, but... Um, they basically suggested, hey, you know, first off, you do a few ref you do a few drawings from reference, try to just draw the characters that they do, and then you start to, like, say, okay, which parts of the- you can't just draw it and be done, you want to actually analyze and think about it a little. Okay, what's the parts of this that I find fun, or cute, or ominous, or whatever spirit you're going for? And then you take that, and you say, okay, can I mimic that, or can I create a version of that that's something I like? And that can be something as simple as, like, a type of stroke. Like, if you, maybe, maybe you're more accustomed, you've been sticking to really fine lines, and you realize that the artist you like has really strong line variants, and you're like, okay, maybe I can try doing a little more with line weight. Or they do, like, a, f a certain way to abstract a foot where it ends up looking really boxy, but you think that it looks more what you want to do and more achievable. So you go for it. Um... I'm going to actually not use the fill system for this one. We're not going for lineless professional art. This is practice. This is sketchy. So we'll use an actual, like, sketchy uh, sketch pen for this one. Um, but the point is, so today what I want to do as a starting one is some of the art... Whoops. Yes. Yes, thank you. Please do save. Um, from one of my favorite comic artists, which is... The comic is called Harpy G, and I have absolutely linked it in chat. I've made a new command called Style, so you can see whoever's style we're currently studying today. Um, this is Harpy G by Brienne Drauhard. I do hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, apologies if I'm not. Uh, definitely go check out the comic. These are obviously not my own characters. These are other characters, so credit where it is due. Alright, we're gonna do a big ol'... 
we've got this default raster layer on here and while I don't need these in here um, I am gonna just make sure we have a citation right from the start that's visible to everyone um, so that we know who we're looking at well, let's go ahead and do that let's uh, calligraphy even a small one's still good for this sort of thing and with this kind of beige background I'm thinking actually kind of like a reddish pen just for our base stuff not to mention that's a good traditional calligraphy color yeah, something like that. Characters. Bye. Let's see, make sure I spell everything right. Rianne. Rauhard. Um, and I can, at the very least, do like a little bit of cleanup on this because as much as I love my calligraphy flare I think that looked like a W and it's not that kind of drow <laughs> that's a different character for a different day you know if I was smart I'd have set this up on the overlay so that everyone could just see it right from the get-go and I'd figure out why there's a one pixel gap to the right of my overlay but unfortunately neither of those are things I can solve today <laughs> yes I do acknowledge that's there I do see it I promise you when I figure out how to fix it I will let you know or maybe I'll just fix it and see if anyone notices yeah, one of the two. Yeah. Works better with a slightly different tilt of the pen. Maybe a little too much. Anyway, so yeah, so I want to do a couple of style studies from Harpy G, which is just a wonderful little cute, um, cute comic. Excellent. Highly recommend it. We won't be spoiling any of the story today, because um, I want y'all to go read it. 100% go read it. It's adorable. It's very well done. The art is fantastic. So I think to start, let's pull up one, let me see if I can figure out how to pull this up on my stream elements actually, is let us pull up uh, just an image. Okay. On this, the harpy ref, that'll be fine. Browse for this, okay. Cool, okay, I see why that always pops up there now. So the first one's Ash. Ash is fun, he's one of the one of the main characters, not really one of the exact core ones, but one of the one of the core four, I'd suppose. Um, we'll get to Harpy in a minute, but the titular Harpy of Harpy G. Um, but I didn't, you know, we need to do a little warm up first. And Ash is a fun character that's also got a fairly fairly easy to recognize character design. Let's actually get our mechanical pencil out here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're getting into the swing of things now. Me thinks. And hey, only 10 minutes before we started. That's faster than we usually go. <laughs> One of these days I'll get a quick intro, but not today. Okay. No, I don't, I don't know if y'all can see that as being selected, but in case you can, what is this? Um, oh, that was the old reference. Okay, we can just uh, toss that. Oh, by the way, I guess actually some closure for anyone who is watching the R fight, I promise we'll start. Um. <laughs> Uh, we did, we did get it submitted on time, and the artist was very appreciative. So I'm, I'm glad that we got one that was good. Next time we won't start art fight in the middle of the month, and then spend two weeks making character references before we actually do anything else. Um, <laughs> next time we'll actually do that with a little more wisdom going into it, perhaps, or not. You know, maybe we'll keep up the spirit of things. Okay. So, looking at this art style, part of it is that obviously it's very much a cartoon, like it is not following exact human proportions. Um, so one thing we're going to want to pay attention to a little bit are the actual proportions of Ash here. So let's see, I'm actually looking at this through the stream capture, same as y'all. So he's tilted a little bit here, so I'm going to want to account for that. But we've got the main height, and we can get, I mean even with the tilt, we'll get some just rough things. We've got hip level here. Looking at this, it's not tilted as far out. Oh, the dragon thing from Zelda. That's nice. Um, so we're kind of getting... I'm just kind of eyeballing these right now. I'm just trying to get a rough idea on this. Um, if you want to do a proper study, I'd recommend doing like a, actually like really getting in there and tracing over the drawing, which unfortunately I cannot do because I've layered this badly. Um, but I do recommend that. Um, and then obviously don't post your tracing, but trace it to figure out the line work and proportions. Take notes on it. Sketchbooks are great for note taking. Like they're not just they're not supposed to be the place where your perfect art is, they're where you take notes and figure stuff out. So let's see. So it comes out kind of to this distance, but for now we're just gonna kinda wing this one a little bit. 
looking at terms of head height including like kind of not quite the top of the hair but close to it the torso really looks like it's maybe one and a half heads if we go to the flare like even down to this level so if we're looking sort of if we've got this line from top all the way to sort of the waist hip area those are not the same thing um I've gone and done this on the wrong layer entirely. That's okay. Um, I'll just clean some of this up a wee bit. Um, and then actually what we can do is we can just cut this into a new layer. Of course, it's still not a raster layer, but we, uh, we'll make do for the first one. This is the kind of thing that you should totally do on a raster layer, by the way. When you're just doing sketching and tweaking and stuff, this is perfect for it. Okay, but looking, if we've got the head for one, and then the torso being a head and a half, so we're looking at two and a half divisions for this. So just sort of eyeballing that, I mean, way to confirm is if we divide it into fifths, does that look roughly even? I'd say yes, roughly. Um, but we don't need full fifths. Okay, so we've got kind of the col collar level here, and it's a fairly slim torso. So we're not going to go anything crazy on it. It's like, it's actually probably slimmer than head width if we account for the sword there on the back. We've got kind of just little collar and then little torso that tapers in to about here. And then because this was going all the way to the flare, so the belt's even going to be like a little higher. Maybe a little higher than that even. Whoop. Ah, okay, text. The joy of text, making your pocket buzz since, I don't know. I'm sure before 2007, but that's when things got really complicated and it started connecting to the internet. Um, I'm sure they'd connected to the internet a bit before the iPhone. On that note, does anyone here remember the release of the iPhone? I feel like that's one of those things that's burned into my memory as like one of those moments where it was I knew it was going to be world-changing, and then it was. Because I remember even the rumors before it, and keep in mind, I was like very young when that... Not, not kiddo kiddo, but pretty darn young um, when that was happening. So it's kind of weird that that's a moment I remember so distinctly. Crazy times. Apple keynotes used to be something, well, they're still exciting, but in a different way. Okay. Well, let's see. We're not going to worry about the sword too much, just sort of knowing that it's there, knowing that that's not remotely the right angle for it, so we'll come back to that. Okay, so the main thing is we've got sort of this, and we've got sort of the head. I want to do the head last. Normally that's not the best idea for just a normal sketch, because you want to get proportions and some stuff in, but like... The heads on the cartoon ones are so interesting with how different people stylize it that I want to be able to take a lot of time to really look at it. Um, but on that note, speaking of interesting, so we look, the foot comes out, ah, the toe comes out to here even, so the rest of the foot doesn't even come that far forward. Um, but it's very narrow. Like the way, the way they do legs, very slim. Just a single line for the fold and toe up. Gets the motion. And we'll, we'll look at the line work in another layer. Um, because the line work on the the line weight on this one's actually pretty interesting too, and is something that you have to pay a lot more attention to when you're not doing the sort of lineless stuff that we've been doing up to this point. Okay, got the simple leg just sort of popping out the back. Again, it doesn't even come down a third of the way on this one. We can sort of get the boot height for reference in here, just as loose. And I haven't quite tapered this enough yet, but again, I'm just roughing stuff in right now. So kind of here. And then that, the foreshorten on that's wild. We got a lot of boot tail detail. I realize that's behind the ref. I'm actually using the display to draw so I can see the ref. So I'm not really going to go past that. Um, but yeah, you can sort of see the foreshortening on this. Um, and foreshortening, for the record, is where things of the same size can look way bigger or smaller on the actual paper because of the angle they're facing you. Like if you had a cylinder that was like really tall, we'll make it really tall. And when you look at it sideways, but if you're looking at it sort of long ways, it can end up looking more like this. Um, just because you're not, you're looking at the short end and because of the perspective, actually it would flare the other way, wouldn't it? Um, there we go, that's the issue. Then it's been looking like that, not like this. Eh, close enough. Um, so the point is that this contour may be at the halfway point here, and it's the halfway point here. And like looking at this, your brain registers, assuming I do the cylinder decently, which I kind of didn't, but yeah. Um, your brain should register like, oh yeah, 3D space, it makes sense that those could be the same size because stuff vanishes with distance. But if you actually look at the distance, like the distance between this and the distance between this are obviously super different. Um, not that we need random cylinders on the drawing canvas. Um, 
we'll just toss those. But yeah, so a little bit of foreshortening on the leg. You can see, whoa, I made the mechanical pencil Mondo by accident, didn't I? What were we on, like? We were probably on six, weren't we? Maybe even five? Yeah. I would think we were actually on four, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. So it's sort of what you get with the with the leg here. Like, you get this little tiny bit of leg here versus the really long one. And this style, it's exaggerated a little bit, but it looks really good. I enjoy it. So that's one thing that I want to look at is how they're doing the foreshortening and how even just the slight tapering of the leg is sort of getting some of that too. As well as the actual proportions of the leg being roughly represented. Let's look. Hands come down to about the same height as the waist. Um, so if you see on the actual reference image, the hands, like the wrists and the waistband are both, well, kind of at this level. They're at this level in the image itself. So zoop, straight across. Right, at this height. And so we'll try to maintain that. And they come out a little past the toe, but not crazy far forward. And we want to make sure we're catching the action from this, but we don't want to over-exaggerate it too much, especially when we're trying to match their style. Um, when you're doing your own art, obviously, like, go, go all, all in on over-exaggeration, see what works. Um, oh, they've got kind of the square tip finger thing going. Yeah, it's a good style, and one that I'm bad at replicating, I'll admit. I need more practice with it. Um... And the other arm's just kind of behind this one, but it does still get the glove hook there. Okay, a little bit of pauldron. Again, rough sketching right now. We'll look at line work in a little more detail after. Let's see, this is roughly the same width as the collar, so I don't need to go crazy with it. And it comes down to about, whoop, no, there. And then kind of tapers, and there's the point. A little bit of detail there, a little bit of detail there. And again, right now I'm just trying to get a rough while I demonstrate and see if I can actually do... I'm used to doing these on pencil and paper, obviously. Um, so I'm not sure how well this will go with um, actually doing it with, with the digital art ref. We'll see. Let's see. Okay. Just sort of rough. Again, it, I'll, I'll do vector layer once we're doing a little more inking and such, but right now we're just getting sort of rough outlines to sort of see what I'm talking about when I talk about these style studies. So the big thing that I like style studies on is because I'm very bad at faces normally, and I'm always fascinated by how people extract, abstract them. Because a lot of the body you can at least get a decent facsimile just with outlines. Like, there's, there's detail you'll lose, but you can do some interesting stuff just by doing like an outline of a person. But the face has so many, like, soft gradients and nothing that's actually line-defined, except maybe the eyes, um, that it's really hard to represent unless you're doing some complex shading. So I'm always fascinated to see how people manage to abstract it in ways where it's totally recognizable, um, even without that. Okay, so we've got... It's, it's a fairly tall head, really. And it's sort of got... It's boxed in a little bit by the hair. Yeah, if you're thinking about proportions, this is not the way to look at it, but I'm trying to look at the shapes relative to each other rather than building on, like, an underlying model like this. Not that that's a remotely good underlying cheapers. Let's try that again. Let's see. We've got this. Yeah. Yeah, you can sort of get, like, an underlying face model. Um, if you if, And you can do a pretty good one, even, if you're, like, actually trying to follow some of those existing methods. Like, they talk about the Loomis method a lot as one of them which has all sorts of interesting proportions where you have to sort of figure out the circles, and it's like a, a third from the top and a third from the bottom, and it's mirrored on the other side if you're doing it well. And then you've got, like, the circle across the top, the circle across the bottom, and then this cuts down and extends. And it's, it's a lot more complicated to construct. It's got all sorts of craziness going on, but it does get you much more human-proportioned faces if you know what you're doing with it. Right, look, now you can see exactly, like, I can just sort of throw eyes and a really ominous smiley face, but it still looks like it's in human proportions. Crazy hair. It's not that crazy of hair. There, see, like, that's a fairly, I mean, obviously it's not a realistic face, but you could see, like, okay, that's in proportion. Um, but that's not, like, and I like to see when I'm doing one of these style studies, I like to try to see what proportions the person who's actually designing them is using. Um, because that can tell you a lot about how to recreate and replicate the style and what parts of it are interesting. Like, if you realize that a lot of your artists use kind of squatty proportions where they make the heads a lot shorter than in reality, or they use really rounded ones where they're much less narrow, then that's something that you can try to look at and be like, okay, we could, uh, 
maybe that's something that I try to incorporate in my style. Let's experiment with some squattier proportions and such. Um, but that's not what we're doing here. Okay, so and we can sort of see it's just a very loose taper on the outline of the face. Not quite that, just a slight in, and then mostly out. And this is going to be different for different characters, so that's why I recommend doing more than one character on each of these. Most of the time you can sort of still find like a line of where the front of the face is, because anyone who's doing proper art does need to sort of know how to aim their faces still. So we can sort of see this, like the nose line is on here. Nose is often a very nice way to try to pinpoint this line. It matches pretty parallel to the curve of the face, actually, um, in this particular style. Let's make this a tad smaller, maybe. That's the body construction line. We definitely don't need that lingering. Um, and then just a big old mouth. Let's see. It, it starts sort of below the point of the nose, so we're kind of, a, I don't know, two-fifths-ish of the way up the face. And it ends up going all the way up to the same height as the crook of the nose on this side. Gets a little perspective from the way they do the teeth, which I'm not sure I'm nailing exactly. Um, I feel like the side on that one is like a little straighter in the original, and same with this one. Although if I, the more you just go over lines, the more it ends up looking like a horrible nightmare. So I, you know, don't don't just repeat lines over and over. Um, I'm trying to sort of feel in the style, but even then, it's better to try to actually actually get it in here. Let's do like a, once again, oh, my tablet's not lined up with my monitor. I, I That shouldn't matter, um, but it totally throws me off when it gets out of alignment, and I don't know why. Okay, so we sort of got like the angle on the underside is kind of a light line, because all of the really heavy line weight, and this is one of the places where line weight really matters, it's in the eyebrows here. That's where a lot of the expression's being defined. Like, even the pupil's comparatively small. And on this one, the eyebrow basically just shades the whole darn thing in, up until it hits the actual hairline. Same sort of eye there. We got the big, the hair clumps. We got kind of a, a small one there, small outcropping. This needs to come to about over the eye. And you've got kind of three pieces of this curve. There's the small up, the straight over, and then the down. I've gone and added a bunch of detail that's not there on this one. Let's see. We got that. The ear is curved, it actually, oh, the ear is actually, that's a good tell for where the hair is. The ear, the top of the ear should be roughly aligned with the pupil on this eye, if you can sort of see. We want to make sure we're matching that. Sort of, it's not quite that square, but it was more square than the original drawing, so that's fine. And then that lines up with the neck about where we expect it to. A little bit of the hair goes this way. And I'm just trying to think of each of these hair clumps differently. They're all sort of coming from the center-ish pivot point. You can sort of see there's a line out there, there's a line out there, down and over, even like the little flare here. Uh, we've got kind of, it's a little big for that one. This one sticks out here, bigger one again. And then like this one, which kind of comes up and arcs over this one a little bit, we're coming back down. And so obviously this is like, this is amateurish. Um, this isn't like an exact replica of the art style. Uh, it'd be very obvious if you put the, well, I have just put them side by side, so it's even more obvious. Even if I try to match the size exactly, like it's very clear that this isn't, oh, hi little face over there. Hi little face. Hi. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's obviously not the same thing, but we can start to look at what's actually, what's being done with proportions and stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and throw a vector layer on here and see if we can't. Get something a little cleaner that's paying attention to line weight now, because that's an important part of this one. Let's see. I still like the mechanical pencil for this. It's still going to be a little scratchy. I'm not messing with the pens yet. I need to find some good CSP pens that are more what I'm accustomed to. And I won't even get into the shading on this one. There's some very simple shading on this that does a lot of work. Um, I say simple, like it's still not the easy, you know, it still takes effort to replicate and a lot of effort to figure out in the first place. Um, but it is there. So the arms look like straight lines, but they're, whoops, I'm on the wrong layer, drat it all. But you can see there's actually a very slight curvature to them still, which is doing more work than we probably consciously are realizing. But like even just the difference between those initial lines I drew and this one, you can already tell like that that curve, you can see the curvature there and you're like, oh, okay. Okay, this should actually be big enough that it's intersecting with uh, 
Nope, don't need that detail. Intersecting with the sword. So I've got the sword angle a little off. That's good to know. Always, I'm always checking things proportional to each other. Because um, it's the fastest way to catch when something is wrong um, in your proportions. Is you're like, oh, this isn't landing where I expect it to. Okay, we need to rework that. And there's the collar. And again, we'll, we'll look at the line weight in just a second. I want to sort of get these this section blocked in, and then I'll show a little more about where that's landing. As if I'm an expert, but I'm trying to sort of study and see from an actual expert, because Brienne is a much more skilled artist than I am, um, and has been doing this for a while now. There's even an animated clip of uh, from the comic, which is phenomenal, by the way, voiced and everything. Um, let's see. Okay. So you can see, like, when I was looking at this, I just inherently tried to sort of piece together, like, oh, here's the proportions of the gloves and all, but actually that is just one single black space. It's just a block of color there. This is something that I personally am always a fan of in art styles, is seeing how, how they can do that. So this all will just become one. There's not even a line weight thing there. But now we can sort of start thinking about line weight a little more, because really, if we look at the arms... There is more, like, compared to the fingers, there's obviously a lot more weight on the arms themselves. This section is filled in entirely, so line weight almost doesn't matter. We're just going to scratch it in. Let's see. Yes. Oh, yeah, roughly. When I was doing these originally, like, back in my sketchbook, I could spend just, like, a couple hours just sitting there and going through everything and trying to pick up every little detail. Which is worth doing, by the way. If you've got the time for it, 100% do it. Um, unfortunately, I no longer have quite the time I once did. Which is why I've geniusly started Twitch streaming, because that's what people do when they don't have time. Um, <laughs> but yes. So we can sort of actually look at these, these block fingers a little closer now, if we're looking at the ref. And even then, I've not quite gotten it. I think it does actually need to be more like this. Clean that out a little bit. The second one comes out a little further, looking at them relative to each other. Curves on the top a little bit before coming in, but it is pretty much actually a straight line in from there. There's like a little more depth because we're actually getting the line between the hands there. Because we've got both hands and then there's just a little bit hidden away. Which all looks kind of interesting up close, but this is the kind of thing is if you just glanced at it for a second, you wouldn't think that this is how that this kind of style is how the hands are actually done. But that's what's ingenious about them, is they can represent hands this way and show a lot more poses and reactions and, like, interesting things with the hands without having to go through the insane graphic detail. And because because it's not that you want to dodge the def difficulty of doing hands, but if that's not the focal point of the scene, you don't want excess detail there because it'll start drawing people's eyes. So, like, if you're trying to bring someone's focus to something, like, say, a face, you want a lot of detail there. If you're trying to not bring someone's focus to something, like, say, the broadsword's, like, scabbard here, like, yes, it's there, and it's a part of his character, but it's not where the detail is. It's open, open blank space. Because it's not the important part of the scene, it's not, it's not the important part of what's happening right this moment. It's relevant to the story, so it's still there, and it's a position of visibility. Um, again, I'm not spoiling anything, so I don't want to say what's going on at this moment in the story. I've kind of made this entirely too small, haven't I? Once again, difference between rough sketch and actually clean up. This kind of comes all the way up here, doesn't it? Kind of curves down. Actually, the arm itself kind of comes all the way up here before curving in. Once again, there's kind of line, line weight differences. In this case, it's actually showing shadow a little more. Like, you can see the shadow under it, whereas the lines on the top in the original reference, too, are thinner. Um, because they're lighter, and so we're not seeing as much darkness, versus this one is casting the shadow on the arm, so it's a little thicker. I've done it more so than in the original, but I think that's okay. Even a little bit under the arm, too. Like, that's not actually shadow casting on the body, necessarily, but our brains pick it up that way, because it's a thicker line. Um, same way, collar is a little thicker line, and actually curves down a tiny bit, and out. Um, compared to the face outline, which is much thinner. In some places, like, not even filling out all the way. Because there's a lot of detail here, and you don't want to drown it in the lines. And also, we've talked about the light facing a little bit earlier. Even this is, like, softer than what I'm depicting here. Kind of a softer curve. There we go. That's closer. Still too much of a curve, really, but it's okay for this. Um, 
kind of pick up the nose line, which again, defining feature, part of this part of this smug look a little bit. Yeah, so we've got the nose as a dark, not only is it in shadow, but it's also defining that darkness a little bit. Um, or defining, bringing your attention here with both the line weight and the amount of detail here, because you've got the whole eye back here. You've got, and you might say like, well, yeah, how could I draw an eye without detail if I'm trying to bring the focus away from the face? But A, part of it is focus is often on the face, so that's kind of in your favor a lot of the time. But B is there are still ways, like you can minimize eyes, like the amount of detail on an eye, even pretty subtly without losing the expression too much. Um, like even then we've got less weight on that. We've got we'll get we can get a simpler eye in here. We can have fewer lines around it. And if you're at a real distance, you can even just simplify it to something like this. Um, and then lose some of that. Or even just, you know. So like it, depending on what you're trying to bring the focus onto and the distance and such. Um, you can you have a lot more control over that than you might initially think. Let's see. Okay, so yeah, we do kind of have the square, and then it's kind of, oh, that's it. It's kind of square at the bottom, and it's narrower there, so that's why the mouth ended up looking a little too wide. Okay, so you can sort of see, like, we've actually, I, I've been kind of, I'm boxing in the curves a little bit to demonstrate a little, and because that's what I ended up doing, and it happens to show it well. But our initial one, I know the mouth initially seemed too wide to me, um, but I think part of that is like is realizing, okay, here's where the base is supposed to be. We can actually look at that relative to the top. Like the top corner actually is already past where the where the left corner of the bottom of the mouth is. So you can sort of see that. And so that's an important marker that like, okay, if this corner is over here, then I'm making the bottom too wide. Or potentially the top too small. But I think we've used the eye and the nose as waypoints for the top, so I'm less worried about that one. This sort of comes in a little bit, but it's kind of a soft curve, and it's not as big as in the initial one. And then the tongue covers basically basically goes to this corner. Let's see, same deal with this. It sort of points to the nose. I think this one, this eye is actually in pretty much the right spot. But again, focusing on line weight now a little bit, we got really thin lines around the edge versus more around the pupil, and the really thick line weight of this eyebrow, really defining the expression there. Not that it even needs this bit here. Because it actually tapers a little more there. Okay. Not only is that for expression, once again, it's sort of doing a little bit of the work that you'd normally have a shadow do as well. Okay. So the hairline weight we can see varies a fair bit. It's still pretty heavy. Um, although even here, like again, this is a lighting thing. It's interesting. So that's what I'm learning about the style on this one. I haven't actually done a, st a style study for RPG before. I'm a big fan of the comic, and I've done a little bit of art of the characters, but never really, like, really focusing on what makes the style tick. Um, so you can see, like, a lot of the shadow is done with line weight, which has always fascinated me. I've never had the best line weight control, so really studying and trying to work it in manually is an interesting sort of way to approach it, I think. I say. I mean, that's I'm just doing it because that's what's working right now. Um, but again, you can see, like, at this point, suddenly the line weight starts to get heavier because it's actually representing the undershadow on it. And then with this one, it's much heavier because it's casting the shadow not just on the other hair, but also on the face. But then this part, again, with a little more light reflecting on it, is not as heavy. This point comes out, and it's even, like, a little more curved out. It's more like that, really. But our kind of ear. My brain says Wallace and Gromit ear, but it's not. <laughs> Okay, we've got this. Let's see. And again, the, the top hair is not nearly as heavy of line weight. Um, except a little bit where these converge, but that's just kind of naturally a part of it. Okay, I actually have to take a pause for just a half a second. I'm sorry, y'all. I'll be back in just a few. Um, and then we'll jump right back into this. See y'all in a moment.
And we are back. Howdies and salutations to anyone who jumped in in the meantime. Happy to have you. Feel free to linger and lurk if you like. Um, when I'm not your teacher. I'm not Even if I ask a question, I'm not expecting you to answer. You're not getting a grade on this. Um, but what we're doing today is a fun little thing. Um, in case you, just, you didn't catch the start of it, we're doing a style study. Now, they talk about master studies in art class, and I definitely recommend those as well if you're wanting to get the hang of proper proportions and figure drawing and all, which you should do um, if you're trying to do human caricatures of any sort. But if you're also trying to just figure out your style and you see someone's style that you really like and you're like, man, how the heck do they do that? I like what they do. This is what I recommend. Find to Go ahead, take one of their drawings or a whole bunch of them, actually, and really dig in and look at it. Try to replicate what they're doing. Pay attention to how they do proportions, pay attention to their line weight, their coloration. And like, once you get the hang of it drawing their characters and seeing like, okay, I'm starting to understand their style, then you can try to incorporate some of those ideas. Um, whether you try to lift it outright is up to you. Um, obviously don't draw their characters, take credit for it and all that. That's plagiarism of the highest degree. Um, but it's definitely better if you're trying to say, okay, I want to see why that's, I, I like this character. It's a cute style. Why is it cute? And then you can take some of those ideas and be like, okay, maybe if I, like, use this method of line weight, maybe I can achieve a similar cuter style. Or if I do a different face proportion, it can sort of get a similar deal. Like, one example I used early on when I started doing these, because I love doing style studies. They're f great fun. You basically make fan art in the process, and you get to improve your own style or improve your repertoire of styles and get a whole bunch of them down right off the bat. And one thing I realized is a lot of the artists I like a normal human face normally has got sort of like, I don't know, if you do a sphere, it's then like 50%-ish lower to the bottom in order to get the chin for like a normal-ish human proportion. What I realized is that a lot of the artists I liked weren't doing it that way, because I really like kind of cutesy styles and fun stuff. They would, it would be more like, just like half as much down, and the faces were a lot wider. Sometimes they'd even exaggerate how you do the chin, so instead of being like full out like this, they just do a big mouth like that. Um, and so I realized that, okay, that maybe that sort of like slightly squattier style is how, is something that I could try to incorporate and work that in and make it a little cuter. And so that's what I ended up doing, um, for at least some of my things. I mean, if you saw Salt's style and some of the drawings I've done, they're not shorter, but they incorporate a similar, similar sort of like the, the cheek going out and the nose defining part of the silhouette in a lot of views where maybe it wouldn't actually do that normally. But because it's so distinctive on the character, it, it works like I'm looking at salt. Like again, you can sort of see it's not a short face, but it's got this the similar like the nose and the cheek is defined more here. And that's, you know, obviously there's room for that to grow. That's just one little thing and whoops in one little view. Um, so it's not a full style in its own right like that. But it's a technique I've learned. It's something that I try to work into different perspectives as well. Okay. Sorry, I'm out of breath. 
Um, current situation has made restroom access a teensy bit more complicated, just temporarily, but it means I have to actually go up and down a flight of stairs now. So I do apologize if I have to pause on that for slightly longer than in the past. Uh, and I'm if, I, if I'm out of breath when I return. I really ought to do some more cardio. If I could figure out a good way to hook up Ring Fit to this, then so help me, that's what we would be doing as well. We'd just start the stream earlier and do fitness too. Um, I mean, they say you're supposed to warm up before art. They would never specified what kind of warm up. I'm sure that would count. It probably wouldn't. That's fine. Okay, so where we left off with this one was we were looking at this art from the comic Harpy G, which I'm actually going to throw in chat again. This is not my character. Um, let, let's see, where the heck did I put the... Uh... Darn it, we zoomed in and lost the text. The character is by Brienne Drauhard. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, this is Ash from their comic Harpy G, which is fantastic and you should absolutely check it out. Um, you can throw style in the chat to see whatever style study we're doing on a different day. And um, where the origin is, go give them, go give them a serious check out. They're much bigger than I am, but it's still, you know, a hundred percent shout out. They're phenomenal. Um, great art, fun stuff, very, very fun style that I'm a big fan of. Um, okay, obviously returning, I can already tell that this is like a little too wide, but I'm going to kind of leave it because it's not as important for our style. The main thing we were looking at, and for what we're trying to focus on anyway, main thing we were looking at compared to my just initial sketch. So the first thing I did was I tried to figure out their proportions, the way they're actually like balancing this. So we were looking like, okay, they've got one head height here. The torso and everything is really like a head and a half with it. And then the legs are kind of, I didn't say it, but the legs are basically the same as the torso, but the other way. This one's foreshortened, so it's kind of a different deal. Um, foreshortening is a blast, but we'll get more into that another time, perhaps. So step one was just figuring out rough proportions, trying to figure out how they do it. And now we're looking at, like, what's really defining on this one? And I feel like one of the big defining things... Because you look, there's not much shading in the actual reference. Like, there's a little bit. Like, you can see there's sort of the stripe, stripe sort of like, like this on the face. And there's just a straight line down the torso like that. And a little bit of highlight you can see on the shoe... The boot but like the bulk of the shading in this really and truly is handled through line weight which is something that i've i've seen before but not in i hadn't really noticed it in this style and it's not something i practiced much so i figured it'd be worth digging into a little bit and actually looking at because they handle a lot of the shadow just through the weight of the lines it's also a way to desert to direct your focus a little bit like obviously if you have more lines and detail in one place your eye is drawn to the face a heck of a lot more than just like the open torso here which is roughly a similar amount of space but your eyes don't focus on it because it's not as detailed um so detail is one way to direct it detail on the fingers and then line weight is the other the face obviously has a lot of both being handled lots of line weight variants which is always interesting and eye-popping, um, but also lots of detail. But looking back at the rest of this, whoo! I hope I didn't peek the mic. I feel like I peeked my own ears. I don't know what that butt was so big. Um, but let's see. Okay. We sort of got the waistband, which again, I'm not going to go too far on because there's fairly light line weight around the edge of this, partly because it's not, not important detail, partly because this area is in the light and it's actually like you can see on this back part in the original, like it's a little darker where it's in the shadow. Once again, handling the shadows basically through the line weight itself. Um, which is, again, I, I'm loving that about this style. Like there is a little actual shadow like that too. And you can sort of see it on the torso as well. But that's not really, like that's doing, I think honestly, less of the work of the shading. Um, I think this would look pretty darn well shaded even without that. Okay. A little accent there I just wanted to grab. Main thing is we got the sword way out of proportion on this first one. I was just roughing stuff in, um, and it wasn't really my priority. But let's go ahead and see if we can't get that a little better. This is obviously coming down, you know, if we look, it's roughly half the distance from the collar top to this as it is to there, so I think this is a good spot for it. And then width-wise, it's roughly the same as the collar. It's They're kind of balancing each other out a little bit here. Um, this sort of bends in a little bit. So we'll kind of get that there. And again, just looking at the line weight, I should really rough in the angles first, but I, the line weight on this one is so good because um, you, you get a lot more of the shadow back here from what's reflected on the hilt. Even, even like the shadow underneath this is pretty well defined by it. Kind of streaks up a little bit there. Um, and then on this piece itself, part of the reason I got the proportion off on this one too is because I wasn't even taking the shadow into account when I was placing this. 
and so I was like, oh, it's sort of over to the right a little bit, but it's not, like, not as much as I thought it was, because a lot of it is just in shadow. And even then, with these lines, like, this one's, this one sort of got the weight of the shadow on it. But like, yeah, that's already getting closer to what we're looking for. This side comes down more like this. This one, again, it's close, but, oh man, that is some wobbly line work on my part. Let's see if we can't do a little better. Another point coming down here. But again, the point itself, it has some detail, but it doesn't have as much shadow, so it doesn't end up drawing the eye with the combination of the two. Of course, the point... Ah, the point of the sword... Well, the point of the sword is this. No. Uh, the point of the sword is not really a focal point in this scene in the comic, and I won't go into detail because y'all should read the comic. I don't want to spoil squat about the story. Y'all should just go read it. Um... But the sword is not a focal point in this scene. It's important to note that he still has it. Um, because it comes up a little earlier. But it's not really like the central focus of what's going on here. Give me a second. Gotta hydrate. I haven't got a hydrate command. So I've just got to actually remember it myself like a crazy person. Um, <coughs> pardon. Oh, and there is one line here. But again, it's not... Not as much focal point. And so that's a lot closer to the actual sword in the original. It's still too warbly over here. May. Tweak that a little bit. Whoops. Okay. But yeah, so we've got just like a little bit of the motion of this. That's pretty lightweight. And now for some of the really heavy work. Um, again, we've got some another section where the pants leg and the line work actually just blend together because they're both the black color and there's not a need to distinguish them. But also, the weight around the shoes themselves is much darker. They're further from the sunlight source, which we can see in the picture. Like, referencing this, actual, referencing this picture, the light source is somewhere over here. You can see the shadow it's casting through the hair. You can see where it's highlighting on the arms themselves, but not on the legs below, sort of in the darkness, and not on the back around near where the sword is. Um, we'll go ahead and clear those out, too. A lot of just note lines here. Uh, I hope I'm not one of those teachers who's... Well, hey, I'm not necessarily a good teacher. We're learning this together. This is a lot of stuff I've picked up through reading guides and just testing some of this stuff on my own. Um, but, like, I am not a pro either. But to the extent that I'm teaching, I hope I'm not just saying stuff and then tossing my notes like those professors who erase the chalkboard every five minutes. If I am, I, you know... Feel free to let me know to slow down if you like, um, but also, you know, you don't have to say a word. I'm not here to mandate participation. Okay, so step one, I think the proportions, I just needed a little more taper and I think this will be good. Um, but the main, let's see, this is a little more than halfway up, I think, actually. And it's kind of like that, really. The line weight ends up defining a taper on it. And then there's just kind of another one down here. Which it almost feels like they're separate shapes floating on a black surface because the line weight is so heavy down here. Which is really fun. Because this actually kind of has a sharper curve on the inner part than it does on the outer part of these lines. Ends up help defining like almost not a soul, but kind of a soul. Okay, so let's actually I'm gonna go going all in on the line weight with this one. Okay, maybe not quite so scratchy as that. But we've got this section here that's all dark. Even just with the sketchy pencil, I'm just going to blur it in real quick. I'm not going to worry about fill tools or what. A, because they don't work on vector layers in CSP, somewhat to my chagrin. Um, but B, because they're not also really necessary for what we're trying to do here. I want to make sure that we get kind of the cache. Oh, the vector lines are going to hate me filling in like that. <laughs> Oops. So I know I talked a little about Raster, a lot, a lot about Raster back when we were doing some of the art fight stuff last month as i say as if that wasn't yesterday um where raster is basically just you pick a pixel and it you just tell the canvas is this pixel on or off and what opacity is it what color is it and it just displays that it just knows it looks the grid of pixels and it says okay this is the stuff happening at those pixels vector is different vector when you make a line it remembers that all of these are part of that line so i can like well, not that. Uh, let's see. Control. Yeah, I can pick it up, and you can see it remembers the nodes. I can adjust the line, and it'll adjust stuff with it. Really awesome. Now it's like an angry baby bird face or something. Now it's just horrifying. Uh, anyway, so you can sort of tweak stuff like that. Even twist it in on itself. 
and you can use the vector erase tools which because they can tell it's aligned well i'm the vector eraser darn it um it can actually detect which things to do so it can erase up until it intersects another line so if i just say to erase this line it'll clean up everything to the intersection same with this one uh, same with this one it's great for cleaning up edges bad for cleaning up big blobs like this because there's intersections everywhere so it just runs into stuff immediately but for this one i can just dupe it and it's gone there's a lot more you can do with vectors than that by the way you can there's stuff you can do to mess with like bezier curves and a bunch of stuff that goes over my head so like we haven't even begun to unlock the power of the vectors whoops other than i keep accidentally moving them which is not my intent Oops, okay, come on. Let's maybe let's just feel it in. Fine. If I if I had the, the line confidence to just make two parallel lines like consistently. Oh, okay. Here I go proving myself a little wrong. But usually I'm yeah, see that's the you know. If I could do that with a little more consistency, then this would be great. Uh, but until I can figure that out. Not yet. And so even then this part, like these two, the line weight's not quite as heavy because there's a little light on the top of the shoe. Really? Well done on this comic panel, I gotta say. I'm impressed by all the thought that's gone into this part. Or maybe it's just enough practice that they don't even need to think about it. Um, but either way, it's impressive, because that kind of practice don't come lightly. Okay, let's see. We'll go ahead and wrap up this other one, and that'll be good for Ash. We probably spent a little too much time on this one, but I think we've learned a lot of good things about the style. Which is... Something that I'm going to note down on it, too, because if I come back to this later, I want to actually remember what the heck I learned. Oh, okay, that actually, this actually tapers in quite a lot here. That's interesting. This point actually ends up being narrower, or, like, slightly narrower than this part, so I even need to sort of do it a little more. Oops, that's the pen tool. A little more you end up with this sort of almost like more of a trapezoidal shape which it had anyway but this really gives it some kick on this this motion the more contrast you've got there <laughs> kick because it's a foot anyway um, that is not a joke it is just an observation Thomas I'm on or Sifamir eh whatever on the off chance anyone didn't realize that Sifamir is a screen name and on the off chance that anyone looks back at this VOD and actually, like, if this channel ever gets big and they see that, then, uh, congrats, you found it. You're the lucky winner. Please don't dox me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, okay. So looking at this, I've made the top of the shoe way too curved, because in my head I was thinking about the other... Well, also, I just thinking about my own mental model of a shoe, which is apparently, like, stinking a bubble or something. Um, shoe. Not how shoes work. Um, but it could be in some styles. Okay. But really, like, this actually, like, doesn't have too much, too much of that part visible. Which makes sense with the foreshortening on it, again. I kind of had a curve there, and a curve there, and then obviously this one. Okay, so once again, this is, the shoes have got really heavy line weight. Obviously, the sole's just entirely filled in with the black, which we're getting kind of patchy with ours. That's okay. Doop -a -doop. Okay. And then the boundaries are much deeper than these sort of detail lines on the inside, which is another important thing. Like, the detail lines, they're still part of the same shape, so we don't want them to be as defining as the boundaries, or else everything just becomes a blur. And unless your art style is that you want everything to become a blur because you want to stress people the heck out, um, please don't do that. <laughs> I mean, not saying please don't do that with your art style, but if that's not your goal, then make sure you're like, like pay attention to line weight or at least line density. Otherwise, you just draw the eye everywhere at once because everything is the same prominence, and thus your eye kind of thinks it's all the same importance, which it ain't. Okay, so there's Ash. I'd say that's not a bad facsimile. It's not exactly the same. I've still made the face curve a little too wide out. Um, that's just sort of a hallmark of my own style that's going to be hard to pull out of this. Uh, something that I have to keep working at. Um, obviously, we got kind of scratchier with this. We can toss even the line work out here a little bit. But otherwise, not bad. Obviously, the color would do more. But you can even, like, you can get an idea of the lighting even without any of the actual shadows just from the way that this has been done with the line work. 
So that's what I'm going to make a note of here. Let's actually crack out the pen. Let's make it a little smaller. Let's take some notes. Okay, maybe a tad bigger. I like the calligraphy pen a lot. Um, and not just for calligraphy, but because it's also actually like not bad for this. Um, for writing compared to the other pens. So, Ash Notes. Wow, wow, not even close. <laughs> One, two, there we go. Nah. Anyway, okay, so first off, shading is mainly done in the line weight. Obviously, that's the thing I've been harping on the most and really excited about, actually, because that's kind of something I haven't practiced much before. There's a few arts. I've, I've looked at a f not lime weight. I don't care how heavy the limes are. I mean, but if we were to illustrate one, we'd not mean do the shading with the line weight. Um, and it'd be the lime weight, line weight. Anyway, um, I guess that'd be if you put the lime on a scale and then shaded the scale. Regardless, that is a tangent that we do not need to go down. Um, <laughs> So that's a big one. That's something I haven't had a chance to mess with in a long time. There's one other style I know that where the line weight is a huge deal, um, which is a fun little comic called Drive that we may have to do on here some other time. Uh, phenomenal. The line weight is like so critical for that one. It's it's really fun. Um, let's see. Obviously, like let's see other pieces that we want to catch. I mean, proportions are part of it, obviously. Like, torso is 2.5 heads. Torso plus waist, really. And of his head, specifically. Like, this wouldn't... this I don't think this would hold true for all of the other characters. Especially not children. I was going to say the child in that photo is an example, but, like, even children proportions are always different. So. Okay. Other things is very, like, narrow. That's part, of, and again, this is specific to Ash. Um, but the point is that there's a lot of character design built specifically around the personalities. Um, narrow and tall. How he ends up looking kind of lanky, which is the goal. Even though his proportions are, like, actually, like, height-wise squattier than, like, real human proportions. Because the, it, the narrow, like, the narrow body here being only one head wide. The legs being very, very thin. Um, really sells the lanky nature. So I want to take a look of that. Width equals one head. And again, I know we talked a little bit about the hand style. Um, let's see. Blacks kind of fade into each other in terms of the shading on the hands and the legs. Fade together. There's no like highlight line to try to intentionally separate them or anything of that nature. Um, let's see what else. Really, the line weight is the most key piece here. And that's the biggest takeaway I've gotten. So I think, you know, we've picked up a few things. Uh, proportion match character. Okay, so I think that's probably enough of Ash. We've spent... We're already an hour in already. My word. Okay. So we may not even get to the second part of the style studies that's really the interesting part. Um, okay, you know, actually... How about this? Because I don't want to miss out on the time entirely, um, rather than looking at Harpy and Opal, the other two characters, um, who, again, if you want to look at them, I'd recommend you go check out the comic Harpy G., um, by checking, I'll check chat style in the chat again. Really phenomenal. Love it. Not paid promotion or anything, obviously. Just a big fan, and I don't want to plagiarize work, so credit where it's due. Um, so the character there. Let's see if we can't make a character in this style. So I'm going to see if I can look up real quick on a different screen. I'm going to pull up a different screen. I said Firefox. Anyway. Let's see what the best one. Would it be line of action? Well, that one's going to be good for faces, but... Um, let's start with that. There's a lot of great web resources if you want to practice gesture drawing. 
Um, and most of them have a filter where you can have, uh, because, you know, by default, figure drawing may or may not be closed. You definitely, like, if you're starting out, depending on what you're comfortable with, you, there's a lot of them that have closed options, which is what I'd recommend for Twitch, especially. But also just good practice. Um, line of action is one of those. So we'll also just, uh, let's see, maybe it wants a timer. I'm just going to put 50,000 seconds. Oh, it has a limit to how many it'll get me. Let's see if we can't find a reasonable character reference that we can try to draw them in the style. Okay. Let's pause on this one then. This will be an interesting one. Okay. So let's see if we can't get this guy in the sort of Ash style. So I'll go ahead and hide this one. Um, nope, I need to think about my naming scheme on these better. Not that, okay, good, good, good. Now, actually, rather than having this open in a link, give me just a half a second. I do apologize. I know I still use the excuse of being new to this, but I am still kind of new to this. Um, so I just need to figure out in half a moment here. Oops, I've rearranged my OBS. Dear me, OBS, please don't do that. Okay, I cannot seem to escape OBS, so instead of doing that, I'm... We'll just make do with what we were doing before. Look at the web page. we'll leave it on pause so it doesn't filter to any of the next ones. No, but then as soon as I click on anything else, you won't be able to see them. Hmm. <laughs> Quite the challenge you've posed to me. Website. Okay, anyway. Um, easiest solution, we'll just do sort of what we did last time. It makes the drawing space a little awkward, so I don't love doing this. But it'll do for our purposes. So, based on what we've learned, looking at the proportion, head height, I'm going to try to emphasize lankiness a little bit. I know, like, if we did a few characters, we'd have a better idea of how they're characterizing different types. But because we only had the time for one... We'll just end up making him look probably a little more like Ash than he really oughta. Um, but this is the important part of doing this. Like, one, you study the style, but if you want to actually, like, learn it and be able to incorporate it a little better, um, A, study it more times than I've just done, um, so you can actually really refine it. This is obviously, this is a little rough around the edges still. Um, let's see. Ash, i got to label, label my layers. Sketch, Ash Sketchum, nope. Uh, source. <laughs> um, what have I done? Wow, how the heck did I just clean? Oh, I guess you can clean sweep that. That is fascinating. The more you know. Okay. Ref image. And we'll have to find this image, but at least it is citing the photo by Marcus. Okay, let me actually... There it is. There it is. There we go. Okay. So keeping these notes in mind, and um, realizing I didn't leave myself any open canvas to think about this, um, uh, let's just... Maybe we do hide everything else. And we can pop them back when we need them. So main thing is obviously part of this is still have a strong sense of the pose. So I want to make sure that we capture that and maybe even exaggerate a little bit. Not the pen tool. As much as I love the calligraphy pen, and I do actually like drawing with calligraphy pens, this is not really the time for it. This style doesn't call for it. I don't think it will work as well, even with the deep the deep blended colors. Okay. We're looking sort of roughly, roughly like this. Got kind of the waist bend a little bit, but then the hips are where the bend is really happening. One leg kind of out for counterbalance. And again, if you were doing like actual gesture drawing or figure drawing, like this is way not the way to do it <laughs> but we're catching sort of the detail oh good we've even got a little foreshortening to work with and a hand excellent okay and then the face is sort of tilted slightly more downward even not like super down but like a little down nope too thin i'm getting into too much detail on the head shape that's not the important part here just that there is a head here and that it's tilted roughly this way. Head. 
Boom. Done. Head. And even then, I've gone and done the thing I always do when I draw heads, which is put them in just wildly the wrong place. And make them the wrong size. But hopefully we didn't do that this time. But head here. Okay. Uh, and let's go back. I do love those selection pens, by the way. One of the best things CSP's got. They're great fun. Um, I'm not... Whoops. All right, vector. Vector erase to the rescue. Get rid of all these weird lines that aren't actually contributing anything. Cool. In fact, even this one's kind of not. Really, we just need these two, don't we? Okay. I could add a chin if I want. Okay, anyway, so we're sort of getting the basic idea of like how this person is laid out. But what we really need to do now that we've sort of got this going is, once again, I'm just going to grab the selecty pen, make it Mondo, select all of this, and let's just uh, shrink this down a little bit. What say we? Handy reference to keep off in the corner now. Okay. Now, let's see, think about this with the proportions we've seen for Ash. So knowing that instead of the normal... So normally you draw humans with like seven and a half. Or, okay, depending on who you ask um, and what you're trying to do. I don't know, somewhere between six and a half to seven and a half, maybe eight heads tall. Where one head is how tall their head is from like chin to top. Um, so excluding especially floofy hair, which is more of an issue with more anime styles. But it's come up in real life too. Um... However, with this style, obviously we've sort of established that Ash is not going to be at these actual human proportion heights. Ash is instead Ash-ish. Um, our Ash proxy, our Ash style individual, is really only going to be... Like, we've got the two and a half that we've established, so this will be our half. So this will be, this will be our neckline. This will be sort of waist and then, like, hip level. And then the legs themselves were roughly the same length as this. So there's another half, another one, another two. Okay, I guess that does putting us at six. Maybe I've gotten the legs too long, maybe I'm... Hmm. Well then, awesome. So we've sort of got that. This character is obviously at a slight angle, so that's going to manifest a little differently. Um, and then I'm going to try to keep to the more narrow, lanky proportions that we've gotten from Ash, which is going to be the interesting part here especially. Because only one head wide is definitely not typical typical of a human. Um, but that's what makes this interesting and makes the character more distinctive. Adds to a more distinct silhouette, which helps with recognizable character designs. We may get into that someday. Um, but I'm not going to mess with that right now. So knowing that like the line on the leg was pretty... Pretty like kind of cartoony bouncy. And didn't taper that much on the initial one. Um, and we are going to have to get these pants in here because they are phenomenal pants. Um, but we'll have to see if we can't work them into the style a little bit because they definitely have a lot more detail than that's, than what um, the Ash character that we were looking at necessarily did. At least in that image. Um, Ash is one of the main characters. Has more outfits than just that one. I'm thinking tilt this a little bit. As much as I like to exaggerate the angles of legs a little bit to add some character, I think that one was getting maybe a tad out of control. We've got that. We've got kind of the top of the foot coming down and bringing us to the same sort of floor level as this foot, which is good. And of that going on with the shoe. And again, I'll get, I'll get proper pants in here in a minute. But first off, I want to get this sort of torso bend. Which, again, is going to end up bringing it ultimately to a lower height than the head one. Let's see. Okay. okay. And then if we show Ash again real quick. Again, we've sort of got... We'll have to get more taper in the legs, even with even with the wild baggy pants. We'll make sure that we get the taper into the bags. Um, the torso itself has a little more taper, too. We'll try to capture that. Um, it's pretty thin waist compared to the top, even. Um, and again, we're not drawing actual Ash here. We're trying to draw this guy, uh, whomever he is. I don't know if it's Marcus J. Random or if that's just whoever took the photo or submitted it or what have you. Um, and of course, the head actually being one head height. 
but also like overlapping the torso a little bit in this particular pose, which is interesting. Always fun. Yeah, good enough. There we go. Head. Okay, and then we've got kind of the arms again. Now I do still want to think about where the arms are landing relative on this. Um, this one kind of lands here. I'll have to look at the arm lengths in the original to see if that's close to what we're actually getting. And then the hand splay here. And then this hand actually ends up splaying like kind of almost the knee even. I may have got it a little long, but uh, no, actually it's pretty close. Okay. Once again, looking at our ash ref, or our ref from a ref rather. Uh, let's see, arms shorter than legs, arms, let's see, excluding the pauldron, they're kind of just the torso to the hip length here. Like, if we're trying, well, hmm, okay. If we were to have this, we were to get that same line here, maybe it's, maybe it's like a little longer? Let's see. Need to actually think about this for a second, because I feel like I'm getting some bad proportion refs here. The legs are kind of longer than the torso, even. Um, maybe, okay, maybe it's that the arms themselves are like the length of the top torso here to the hip, or to the waist rather, whereas the legs are more like the top torso all the way to the hip and the end of this, the sort of tunic. So let's, let's, hmm, let's, let's operate on that assumption for now, in which case we're going to make these a little shorter. Come on, hand, let's just scoot you up a little bit. Uh, one of the benefits of digital art, and this one's foreshortened enough that it's, um, not necessarily obviously different, and actually I think this may actually be more correct for it. So, accidentally fixing problems, woo! Okay, but this is, again, just sort of a loose sketch. It's not really got the proportions we're looking for. We're trying to, again, one thing we established is while that's roughly a head, it definitely tapers more at the waist um, for the original design. And we can definitely emphasize some of this with this cool vest. Um, and then the legs themselves have a lot more taper than this and tend to be a lot they're like a little bendier they're not they're not like a there's there wasn't necessarily a knee joint in that one and so i think i'm going to actually try to stick it may have just been the pose but i'm going to try to stay true to it even so it's one way or the other we're going to learn something from it you know <laughs> so that'll be a bit fun a bit of fun that'll be something the point is we'll learn something and we'll either get better or it'll make the style much worse and we'll at least learn what not to do. Either way, that's a win in my book. Um, and so I may actually end up moving the foot back up a little bit. Zoop. Yeah, it messes with the balance a tad. Well, I may have to shorten this leg. We'll see. We'll see if we want to do that. Honestly, looking at this and just looking at the actual ref, the torso is feeling a little long. I feel like we've gone slightly beyond what we should with that. So I may may tighten that up a little bit too. Hi face. Okay. Um, so let me just, again, the beauty of digital art. Uh, I'm just going to grab all of this and I'm going to move it over there. And that's feeling a little more, a little more correct just at, at an impulse. We'll see if that ends up sort of working in the end. We can sort of look at the light source on this one too, and we can sort of take that into account. Whoop. Because it is sort of, it is, well, it seems to be an even light on this side, to be honest. Slightly to the front of the character, and then on this side. Uh, that's not, that just looks like another measure. Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. Let's get to ref image sketch. We'll actually start working on making this look more like it now. Okay. So zooming in and focusing a little more on one area at a time, let's try to translate this into something that actually matches. I can translucent that a little bit so we can definitively see what we're doing. Okay. Now we may have to lighten up some of the detail a little bit. Um, just because this style is not necessarily meant for like the quite the same... I'm sure it could represent it in the hands of the original artist, but from what we've studied... I don't think I can necessarily translate the full level of detail into it, and I'm not sure we would want to, frankly, if we're trying to do a cartoon of this character, basically, this individual here, then, like, 
We kind of don't necessarily want it to match exactly. We want it to fit into the style of the world. I don't want too much detail on any of this. I think I think you'd probably want to put more emphasis on bow tie. That's kind of a distinct character trait, and even if it's subtle in the original, it's fun to have on here. Uh, I love how this wrinkle. If I were doing like a proper wrinkle study, I love fabric folds. They're so fun. Um, but we again, that's way too much detail for what we're trying to do here. Um, another time, another time. Ah, these bag. This is a this is a fun ref. A fun ref for another style as well. I'm gonna have to come back to this one too. Not that it isn't fun in this one. It's given us a lot to work with, a lot of characterization on this. This area's got so many wrinkles, I'm going to have to depict at least one in the final drawing. Let's see, and then I sort of got hand, which again, we'll come back to how that was actually depicted originally um, in, the, in our reference. We'll come back to how that they're abstracting hands. Let's see. Kind of ish there. I'm going to use that as my initial reference point for it. It's not exactly right, but it's not super visible on this model either. Um, what with the baggy clothes. Abrupt taper into that, and then the hand again. All right, we could make the button distinct. I don't know that that would actually fit the world, so I'm not going to do that one too much. Okay. And then we're doing our taper legs. But we're doing our taper legs with baggy clothing. So we've sort of got that. We've got kind of this. Got a little bit of an interesting pull to it, which is fun. Ah, man. I love... I love the fabric on this one. <laughs> um, but we can still sort of make it match, even with this style. At least roughly. We're going to want to make sure that we're still capturing the taper of everything best as we can. And uh, we'll loosen up on some of the detail here a little bit once we get into it. Oops, I'm still in eraser mode. I'll toss these two. A little bit, okay. Keeping in mind that we still want to make sure the legs look really thin and narrow. Ah, that actually, ooh, that kind of exaggerates the pose a little bit. That's kind of fun. Okay, maybe I'll leave that. That's not necessarily in the original style, but I think it's fun and something worth trying a little bit, messing with. And then we've got shoe details down here. That I don't, I want to make sure we don't lose. Oh, these are classy dress shoes. Very cool. We'll see how much of that we can capture in the uh, actual final once we get to that. And then the head. So again, one thing we're remembering is the head was kind of tall in this style. And let's see, we we didn't... Uh, let's, let's actually look at Ash again while we think about this. So looking at the face, they've got the sort of thing where it's the, the contour here. I mean, in the original it was even more faint. Just a very faint, like, bump there and then back into the smooth for the chin. Kind of smooth out chin. A lot of emphasis on the mouth in this one. I think it'll be less in this next one, but there'll still be the space for it. Let's think about this. We've sort of got the chin. We've got this really soft taper, like crazy soft taper for the face. Uh, even this is like maybe a little too much. And then the rest for Ash was mostly defined. Well, it was defined by the hair, but I think we can still work with that. Um, okay, well, let's let's think about this because it's facing down. We've got kind of that. We've got the hair coming down like this. We can even get kind of a point. We can exaggerate a little if we want to. Um, and then let's see. Oh, more vertical there, and then more over here. There we go. That's getting more like it. And the bow tie can actually cover up that side of the face, and I think that like of the neck, and I think that'll work pretty well. Now, thinking about this, I don't know how we'd necessarily, because one of those things that's often very different between characters, even in the same style, is noses. Uh, I notice the artists tend to vary those up a lot. So, like, I don't I don't necessarily want to mimic Ash's nose exactly, but I feel like it's kind of the one we've got to go with here. I, I appreciate the 
sort of deep focus that we've got in the original image here. It's striking this wild pose, but it's very much like not not in a like frenzy, but in a controlled effort. It's interesting. Okay, and then one thing I want to look at, because it's always good to look at, how are they doing eyes? Okay. Flat line at the bottom, and then sort of the two side and big eyebrow emphasis. Got it. Got it. I know we talked about the eyebrows a lot in the original when we were talking about this earlier. Let's lean back in on them. I don't think Ash has really left his face. Let's try to stay true to that. Okay. I, I, I'm kind of leaning into the more... Like, this almost looks too determined. And there's almost like a tranquil focus in the actual one. So let's see if we can capture that. Keeping in mind the like soft line weight again. Okay. Again, it's not perfect. It would look a little out of place in the comic, but it's a start. And that's the point, is what I really recommend is like I typically when I was doing this back when I had all the time well, more time in the world than I do now, um, I would do like basically three references from the actual art style. Um, especially I was focusing on faces in those days, which could help it go a little faster. But three different characters, or at the very least, a character from different angles. But really, it's better to have different characters. And then, I would attempt to look up some stock images and say, okay, can I render a person in this style and have it be even sort of recognizable as that person? And sometimes the answer was yes, and that was always awesome. Like, I could figure out what worked about the style and recreate it. Sometimes the answer was no, not remotely, and usually that was my own skill. Occasionally it's one of those styles where the where it's, you know, character designs are more defined by cartoony, not cartoony. How do I put, there are certain styles where character shape really isn't that different between people and it's just accessories. And so if you've just got a stock image that doesn't have as bold an outfit as this one, then they end up just sort of blurring into a default background character. Um, that's usually not the case, though, and it's definitely not the case with Harpy G. Um, okay, so let's do another one of these. Let's make our sketch real faint. Let's make our reference image one here. Let's see if we can't actually do this, but this time, paying attention a little more to line weight. And maybe, as much as I love the pants, I don't think I've rendered them quite well. Okay. Let's, let's think about this. We want... I'm going to try to keep it on five for as much of this as I can. So we're thinking about two things. We're thinking about where we want to draw people's attention, and we're thinking about where the heck the light source is, which it seems to be just kind of like over here, light source. Um, so we don't necessarily want crazy defined on the nose. Whoops. This is part of why I do the layer fading, is so I notice every time I fail to click off the right layer. So we can do like a kind of soft nose, soft eye details. I've gone and made this one like a little small, so it's fine. And then the strong brows. I like that. Once again, not going over the edge of the face, which in and of itself, especially on this side, can be really faint. Might might end up bringing like a little more line weight on this side as it gets away, but like not too much yet. That's not really the important part. This hair itself is not going to cast much shadow, so we're not going to be able to follow up on that technique so much. But that's okay. We can still keep it. It's still a border shape, so it's going to be slightly heavier than the face details. At least where it is on the border. So that's fine. Bow tie I want to draw attention to. So I'm actually going to go kind of heavier line weight, especially on this side where it's like might actually be casting a shadow. Um, we'll do like a little heavier there. And then I'll, it's still going to have decent line weight here. I really want the emphasis on the bow tie. Even if I'm just sort of like silly, silly sketched it in the way I have. I like having it that way. Um, I think this is good. At least good enough for our purposes. And this actually, we want to sort of draw attention to the suit, much like in the actual reference here. Um, this is carrying a lot of the, like, style emphasis. I say that as though that's a thing. I like how it looks and I want to pay attention to it. So I'm going to go and actually proper fill this in. We'll just make it one big dark form. Not elite part of the shading on the bow tie, but that's okay. That actually just helps emphasize the shadow of the bow tie a little bit. I mean, we're just going to blur these together. They're just one form. 
Whoops, don't need that in the bow tie itself. Okay. Let's see. So looking at that, looking at the way that these are working, let's think about where the emphasis is going to be on shoulder. Which again, this part's more in shadow. So, but it, so it's going to have a little more line weight, but we're not necessarily emphasizing it like full stop right off the bat. And I'm actually going to bring this in a little bit. I think it's going to add add a little more to the narrowness of the character design and to the flare when this really kicks out. So I don't know that we're even going to show any wrinkles necessarily in the last one. I mean, come on, I've got to show at least one. These are fun wrinkles. Ah! They're fun to draw. Okay, so we've got this, and again, I think that we'll want like a little more line weight on this one, especially under here where it's going to be casting the shadows a little bit along this edge. A little more on here. And again, like just outlines already can have a fair bit of line weight when it's the full outer border um, because they're not detracting from the overall form. They're helping define it um, in terms of the like silhouette of the figure. Um, which, you know, sometimes you do want to detract from that. Sometimes you don't want that to be the whole point of emphasis. But in this case, I'm sticking with it. Okay. We had some folds. The original style had some folds. I'm going to permit myself at least that one. I realize it's like, it probably doesn't need to be that dark. It's on the lighted side. But we can get at least one in there. Oh. you got to give me that one at least. <laughs> okay. We've got this, we've got this, I'd even give, give a second one there if I really wanted. Um, we've got, we'll, we'll look at hands again in a minute to see how they handled those. I don't want to do those without refreshing my memory a little because I remember they were kind of distinct. But even at this point already it's a matter of remembering like how distinct were they, what was distinct about them. That It doesn't stick in your head until you do it a few times and until you really try to go at your own. Like saying, okay, I'm going to try to actually replicate this style. Because I know that wasn't how they did the hands. And then the pants. Um, <laughs> gotten a little silly with these, I'll admit. But we can definitely go heavy on the lines here. Once again, we remember how heavy those, those lines for Ash's character. Oh, oh, looking over here. Looking how heavy the lines were on the legs outside of the light. We're going to lean into that. And really go all in on this. Like not only are the pants themselves going to be heavy, but then as we get to this lower section, it's going to be really heavy line weight. Same. Even the shoes. Well, actually, the shoes should probably mostly be shadowed, shouldn't it? I need to do this shadowed well enough that this triangle right here pops so that it's clear that this is shoe. And that there's actually like a little sock visible there. Huh. Let's see here. This, I like this swoosh. It's not really true to the original model or to the style, so I'm not sure I can keep it. At least not fully. Like a little bit. Trying to think how they did the handcuffs, and it was really more just like this. Not like handcuffs as in, you know, arresting someone, but like the, the cuff is in the little part. This part. <laughs> okay. I'll allow myself a little bit, a little bit of flair there. But again, like the original style wouldn't have had this much. And the guy is still feeling a little tall for it, really and truly. I may have to look back at the end result and see if... That's one thing that we do have to remember to do at the end of this, is we do, once we finish this, we have to look back at the original and say, okay, did we get close? Or did we miss the mark? And sometimes they miss the mark. That's the truth of it. You're not going to nail it the first try every time. I certainly don't. Maybe you will nail it. Maybe you're, like, the awesome, like... You see it, and you can immediately recreate it perfectly. Um, that is not me. Okay. Let's see. So we'll do a little bit. This one is closer to the light, so I'm not going to go as heavy on it. I say as I still go really heavy on it. Um, 
but it is still, you know, it's still the lower section. It is still in this this heavier line weight territory. But again, I shouldn't be filling out. I should be doing like strong strong strokes with this, but I'm being a little lazy on it. I'll admit. Okay. I'll just move that one in a little bit. And now that we've seen how far we've gone on those, I may put a little more into this one too. More so in the back ones, really. Same with this one. There we go. Go ahead and fill this part in, too. If I were smart, I would put a raster layer and just use the fill tool. But instead, we're just doing this. Zoop, like that. I can even do a little bit of the emphasis under the ear. I don't know that the original style went quite that far. Oh, we still gotta get the mouth. There we go. Sort of get the open feel a little bit. Okay. Much as I love the style of that under sketch, it's, um,. Oops, not exactly true to form. This, however, is getting closer. We just need to handle the hands and maybe make a little more consistency on some of the darker shading around here. I'm just, I'm actually gonna up my brush size. That's what I did when I was following the original and it makes more sense to do it here now too. Since, since I've gone a little over the top on the shading because I like, I like this idea of shading, um, I'm just going to kind of lean into it for this one. That might be a tad too much leaning into it. That definitely is. But, you know, a little more than I have. Ends up looking almost like a rim shadow when I get it that far. That's fine. No, see, let's, let's go back to the five on this one. Let's see. Okay, I'm gonna go back and look at our ref's hands a little bit. Whoop. Hands a little bit. Hands a little bit. Okay, so seeing that they stuck to the blocky fingers, well, they obscured most of the wrists, so that's gonna make it a little more complicated. But really light lines, not necessarily emphasizing every finger in and of itself, but just the rough general form of them. Okay, one of these hands that's gonna be easy to do, one of them it is not. So, let's start with the easy one, so we can sort of refine and figure this out. Let me throw this down in here a little bit. Because we've got, again, whoop. I may go to a finer point just for this. I try not to get too fine a point, because then you're just dealing with, the, you start bordering on pixel, like pixel art, but so big that it's bad pixel art, and nobody wants that. Okay, so not quite that pointy on the end. Kind of bring it in, kind of bring this one, curve it in a little bit. Curved a little. The angle, the angle helped define the difference between them too. Like this one kind of came like that, whereas this one could sort of be distinctly visual, visually different. Um, and that way we're sort of saying, okay, yeah. Whoops. Now that works. Now we can get kind of like a little more of one. And that's, whoa. Whoopsie doodle there. Okay. And that sort of captures the feel of it. Okay, really, why are we on the curve tool still? And there we go. Gotta not hit R. Keys on this keyboard are a little close together, or I'm just not used to it yet. One of the two. Okay, so this one definitely curves up, so we'll just kind of do that. This one down. This one kind of like that. I'm just gonna sort of loosely get these in. They're not really where my emphasis is. 
We need to make sure that the curve of these makes any sort of sense though, otherwise some of the fingers are going to look way too short. There we go, that's a little better. But I'm not going to darken it particularly because that's not where we want the emphasis to be. We want the emphasis to be on this wild pose and uh, the tragically not plaid pants. Because I am not... Uh, no, no. E even just a bad overlay plaid. Nope. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Okay. Zooming out. Let's see. Let's... Let's compare to Ash and let's see where we missed the mark, because I feel like this one missed the mark a little- whoops, okay. Solution for this, I can actually just move the whole layer. It's still kind of meh, uh, but at least take all three. Okay. So looking at these, let's see what worked and what didn't. Okay, so first off, we know that this style has really exaggerated foreshortening. I don't think I quite captured that in the arm. We could tweak the... Actually, you know, no point in just talking about it. Let's actually do this as we do it. Let's make the corrections. Okay, so I think one thing that we want to look at here is let's... Let's literally, I'm going to grab it and we're going to make some adjustments. So let's get this tapering faster. Okay. And then I can even like do a little bit of cleanup there. And then that also is going to mean that we immediately, whoops, no, not with this tool. We're immediately sort of pulling up with it. Immediate taper. Just to really into it. This does put the wrist position at kind of an awkward angle, but I'm kind of... we'll leave it at that for now. We'll just let the hand cover that. Um, more importantly, let's see if we can't do the same or similar deal here. We've got too much detail on this arm. Even with the fabric, that's not necessarily like what I want to catch, so I'm gonna pull this one in. And again, if we'd studied more of these characters, we might have seen that, oh, there's some more variants on some of this stuff. And like some of them do have more detail, but because we only really have had time to deal with Ash, that's the one that we're going to have to base this on. Move this in a little bit too. Sort of tweak this one inward a little bit. Whoops, didn't mean to still have that selected. Deselect all that. And then this one, let's go ahead and bring it in as well. Get more, more exaggeration on that. And honestly, this may still be too much contour on this arm. So I may just toss this bit, even though it's perhaps perhaps more realistic. It's not matching the style that we're going for. And sometimes you've got to put more emphasis in making sure that what you do actually looks like it belongs in the style. They try to some of the corners off of this one too for the same reason um, oh, this ends up looking a little crazy over there but that's okay um, and now we need to uh, the, this is one of the joys of digital art is just grab it and scoot it over and then just grab this section and tweak it a little bit pull it in that will do. That will do. So I think that still captures the original here, and it fits this, like, simplify arm style better. It's not perfect, but it is better. I do think... I'm actually pretty happy with the leg shading. It's not perfect, mind. But I think it does sort of fit, fit the tone, fit the mood. Maybe... Okay, one thing I would do want to tweak, actually, is I want to add a little bit more shadow down here to this piece really get those lines going. Alright, well, we'll not add quite that much, mind. A little more, though. There we go, okay. Just really like, liven that one up a little bit. 
Especially this one obviously is in full shadow. I'm good with that. We haven't quite got the leg taper. I think part of that is just the pants bagginess. Like you can tell that the legs are still of that style by the way it bent, it catches at the knees. Um, which I'm, oh, I gotta get at least a little bit of fold in here. Uh, we, we've got this other one that kind of catches that detail, so I think that's okay. I think that we've done we've done well in the shadow here. I think that fits well. I think roughly the tailor and actually like the torso proportions are pretty good. Um, legs legs are probably too bendy. Like this one doesn't have nearly that much taper. But again, part of that is the pose. I really wanted to emphasize the, sort of the this movement here. We could try to tweak that. I kind of am inclined to leave it as is, though, to be honest. So we may may leave that as such. Face. Not as expressive, but it's also not an as exaggerated of a pose, so I think it's okay for this purpose. Um, if we had a character with a really, like, wild mouth pose, like, we could try. We could tweak this a little bit. We could see what happens. Whoops. Let's scooch this up a little bit. Like, we could really, like, look at this one and try to capture, like, like teeth and stuff if we really wanted to. See, now this character just looks proper happy, and now they look determined. Um, but, like, I'm not sure that it would really work so much. I mean, I, I don't know. On the other hand, this is a really emotive... Like, this looks kind of quiet and not quite as concerned as maybe it should. Maybe we need to bring the brow down a little bit. Like, pull it away from what we're actually seeing and bring it into what we're trying to express. No, um, let's see. We do want more emphasis on the pupils. Maybe not quite that much on the edge of the eye, although it would make them look strained. Makes them look old. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, well, this is one of those things where you really want shading, because if you do one of these lines and you're not careful, they just look old immediately. Um, even though that line is there on the photo, it is right here. Um, and this guy does not look old. Um, but when you do this and you don't have the rest of the shadow shading to match or the other ways to balance it in, it becomes such a focal point that your brain's like, oh, that's there. It must be important. They must be old. I'm, I'm bad about doing that still. Um, okay, so I may leave, leave it as that. Roughly direction of the head is not bad. Angle of the eyes is... Again, it's not exactly the same. We've got them looking a little more forward, but that's, I think, okay. We could tweak the hand a little bit. I think that one of these fingers is in front that shouldn't be. But let's use the same brush size that we were using. Should, start, should have started with the front finger on this. I think that would have made a little more sense. Probably made this part a little easier once we were getting back to it. But they're not pointy, they're still blocked off fingers, so I need to remember that when I'm trying to make them all, like, spear points for some reason. That'll do. Okay. So obviously it's not exactly the same. I think if we did a little more practice, I think that it would work better. Um, this, the shading, we went probably a little too heavy on these upper parts. We can tweak that a little bit. And then there's one thing I do want to really try to make pop. And that's this bow tie. I'm going to emphasize the lines around it a little more, even despite the fact that there's so much darkness around it that the other shadows just kind of get gobbled up. And then let's try to loosen this line up a little bit. Get that to be more of a taper, at least. Same with this one, it probably doesn't need to be that heavy. Hmm. Well, truth be told, I'm thinking that's probably good for this one. So! For anyone who's wondering, I'll do a, I'll do a quick recap here before we head out. Um, but we may wrap up a tiny bit early today because I think unless someone has suggestions, you don't have to. Um, or we could just do some quick doodles, see if we can do like a fun ash doodle real quick. 
Um, but these, this is not my character. This is just a, this is this man. This is not a character at all. Um, I'll go ahead and put it, put these layers back. Well, no, back where they belong, further down here. And well, we can hide them, show some of the ash. And the main thing is that remember, this style is not my own. What we've done today is a style study. For anyone who dropped in, this basically means that we're trying to look at someone whose art style we like, determine what the parts of it we like are, and that doesn't have to be concrete. We could just say like, oh, it's cute. Okay, what part of it makes it cute? And that's where we can figure out the concrete parts is we can ask the why. It's like, okay, it gives this feeling, it does a fun thing. How is it doing that? How and why, What? why does it look cute? What parts of it are the things that make it look cute? So in this case, we're, I'm, I'm a big fan, not specifically for cute, that's just the example I'm using, but I'm a fan of this art style by uh, Brian Drauhard. I, again, I apologize if I'm getting the name wrong. Fantastic artist, creator of the comic Harpy G, which I cannot recommend enough. I'm gonna throw that link in chat again. Just making sure that everyone's got that. Uh, really fun, really fun comic. And I wanted to break down that art style because it's one I enjoy, but it abstracts characters a lot more than I usually do. Um, they've got a lot of very distinct character design in there. It's a real blast. Um, so I wanted to break down a few of them. We unfortunately only had time for the one today. Maybe we'll come back to it tomorrow. We could look at Harpy and Opal. We may look at some other things too, though. Lots of good styles out there. Lots of fun ones. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, that's basically the gist of it. I like to do these style studies. I find that it helps me not only figure out my own style, but also like learning to do these more and more makes it easier to do fan art and replicate other styles, which is actually a really handy skill to have. Because if you see something new, you're like, ooh, I want to try that. Um, you've sort of got practice identifying what parts of it are distinct. So even if you're brand new to this style, you've practiced with other ones. You're like, okay, I sort of know what to look for, what are defining things. Um, but in the meantime, it may actually be time for me to see if we can find someone to raid. We haven't done that before. It wouldn't be a bad time to do it, assuming I can, you know figure out the controls uh, which as of yet I have not um, doop -a doop -a doo doop -a doop 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 is it this one nope it's not that one is it uh, maybe I just open this in twitch directly um, no no I'm I found it the other day I know there is a way it ain't that. Okay. Um. Manage raid settings? Um, doop -a -doop -a -doo. Apologies for this. I am... I mentioned this is still the first month of streaming. Ah! Okay, okay. That looks... I think that's one of these. Raid channel. Ooh! Okay, yeah. This is actually a great one. Oh, right, it's Monday, Honey Goblin's treatment. Okay, Honey Goblin's fantastic. Very fun artist, does some great stuff. Part of the one that, it's one of the many folks that inspired me to actually start trying to stream this stuff. Uh, as I learn, Honey Goblin's a lot more experienced than I, so let's let's go do that. Let's go see what, what she's up to. So we'll, I don't know how long it takes for the raid to go. Oh, six seconds. Okay, then let's just do that rating now thank y'all for coming out it's been a blast i don't know if that worked i assume that worked hmm did that work does anyone know if that worked? Ah, oh, we're hosting. Perfect. <laughs> 